this catch. I'll take her. Not so fast, my dear. And welcome back. This is part nine of Let's Play. Oh, excuse me. Let's play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. And we're still in a cutscene. A kiss of death. You KGB, we may be able to use her. Shall we take her back to the base? Perhaps we should. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. I think it's time I gave this marvelous this new toy a try. Kurt, even if they are our enemies, they're still our and country. Yeah, in our last video I was talking about how those uh, nuclear rifles actually existed, but that's not at all how they were used. This guy's just a beast. Colonel. But yeah, I was really surprised to see it on the History Channel, like, just two or three months after, after seeing it here for the first time. It was never used in combat, though. I think we would have heard something about that. Data save. That's usually a good sign. And now, the game is actually beginning. So, uh, I don't think you guys want to watch this again. I'll just skip it. And if you did want to see it, sorry. Probably could have let it go a little longer, but I want to get into some of these cutscenes, so maybe I don't have to do a fourth video tonight. One week later, 11.30 uh, p.m., August 30th, 1964, Arctic, Arctic Ocean, Ocean Airspace. Feet, approaching Soviet airspace. Arriving at the designated drone launch point. Drone oil pressure and voltage are nominal. Payload oxygen supply is nominal. Power supply to payload antifreeze system shows no problems. No gusts. All systems go for drone detachment. Snake, we can't risk a halo jump this time around. Airspace security has gotten tighter since we were last here. We can't get as close to the ground as we did during the Virtuous mission. So instead, we'll be using one of our newest weapons. Snake, you're being given an honor on par with Alan Shepard. This is our last chance. We're going into space. Cases. If you fail, you'll be back in a hospital bed again, waiting for the firing squad. <laughs> So how does it feel to be a patient in one of the most advanced ICUs in the world? And here's another flashback. Could you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? I'll never get better with them assaulting me day and night with their questions. Must be part of the top brass's inquiry. More like an interrogation. According to them, I'm a traitor and an accomplice to the boss's defection. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Does that mean they're after you, too? Let's just say neither one of us is going to be made a national hero. 
Does this mean Fox is going to die? No. This fox is still one step ahead of the hounds. The reason I came to see you today, Jack, it's time for Fox to clear its name. What are you talking about? The situation has changed. We've still got a chance to come out of this one alive. Yeah, what kind of chance? Don't get too excited. Here, have a cigar. It's Cuba. This morning, I had a meeting with the CIA. They decided when they're going to execute us? No. Something even bigger. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. President Johnson? Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chair. It was a hotline call from Khrushchev to President Johnson. From the head of the Soviet Union? That's right. A few days ago, one of our country's main design bureaus, OKD-754, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion. At about the same time, our anti-aircraft radar picked up a signature that appeared to come from one of your military aircraft. Does any of this sound familiar to you? In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. Depending on your response, I may be left with no choice but to order the military to maximum alert and unleash Armageddon. With the help of your predecessor, I was able to survive the Cuban incident. But my power is not as great as it once was. If I am to survive this crisis, I must have your full cooperation. I should have contacted you myself. Did you know that one of our soldiers defected to your country a week ago? No. So you haven't heard that. The man who arranged the defection was a group colonel by the name of Yevgeny Borosovich Volgin. Volgin? Of the Brezhnev faction. Go on. Who is the soldier? Her name is the boss. He's a living legend. During World War II, she was the one who led us to victory in that war. In Russia, you know her as Voyevoda. You mean the boss, the mother of your special forces? Yes, that's the one. And she took two miniature nuclear shells along with her. The boss took two miniature nuclear shells. I'm afraid so. I believe they were a gift for her new hosts. The Davy Crockett Atomic Battle Group delivery system was completed two years ago. Serious problems were found with the launcher's range and precision. Although they were mass-produced, they've never been deployed in battle. But Sokolov's research facility was completely wiped out. The whole area is polluted. I can only offer you my deepest condolences over this terrible tragedy. So, the box with Colonel Volgin's help stole two experimental nuclear shells and took them with her as a gift when she defected. Then, shortly thereafter, Sokolov's design lab, a top secret military research facility, was destroyed by one of these weapons. Am I right so far? Yes, that's correct. And the American government denies any involvement in the affair. Is that right as well? That's correct. We were not involved in any way. Then what was a U.S. military aircraft doing on our radar screen? It was clearly in a violation of our airspace. And yet you say it was not acting under your orders. That's correct. You expect me to believe that this was all the work of a single soldier? I don't know what else to tell you. The army insists that this is all a ploy on your part. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Our government had nothing to do with it. And I would like dearly to believe you. However, I'm afraid my power over the military has weakened since the Cuban incident. I will need some kind of proof that this was not the action of the American government. You have one week.
You must catch the boss yourselves and recover the remaining nuclear device. So that's our mission so then far. you must find some way to prove your innocence. Prove our innocence? And, uh... Yes. Preferably yeah, I'm starting to run out of time. Prove to me that so, this is not it looks like we're gonna, gonna do one more episode tonight. And Ball hopefully we can get into the gameplay in under 10 minutes. So, uh... Thanks for watching, and make sure you come back for part uh, part 10 of Let's Play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. See ya. One week. You have only one week. And if it is not too much to ask, do something about Volk.